Hmm, should I have my chocolate or an apple? We have Dr. Josh Axe in the house today on Sister to Sister, and we're talking gluten free. We're talking what's a superfood. So join us and find out, and maybe I'll get a piece of my chocolate. And welcome to Sister to Sister. And here's what you find. Real women talking about real issues from a biblical standpoint. Our view from Jesus' word. And that's how we roll, right, right, girls? Right. And we you always have it. questions. I think our questions relate to us and to what's happening in the world. So we're going to get right to it. You're going to love this question, girls, women out there. Can, and, guys. Uh, and guys, can <laughs> a girl ask the guy out? Okay, and should a girl ask a guy out? Is it, is it okay? Uh, oh my gosh, they are never at a loss for words I'm ever. Just, who wants it? Well, I mean, the, the Bible says the violent take it by force, so. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm just kidding. Uh, you know what, I do have a situation where I have a friend, and this was on one of the internet dating sites, and she, she was divorced for many, many, many years, raised her children, a good, solid, independent woman, uh -huh. and guess what? what? She was the one that made the move uh -huh. to ask the guy on her dating site, yes. and they have been dating now nine months, almost ten months, Aww. they're very happy, they're... She was the one. Yeah. That made the first move. That yeah. made the you, first move. If you ask the question the way you did, I'd say, yes, a woman can ask a guy or even make approaches. Because I got this scripture when we were talking about this, and Jesus warned the Pharisees, saying, you've abandoned the commands of God for traditions of men. It's been a tradition for like just a hundred or a couple hundred years mm -hmm. that the man is supposed to ask the woman out. Right. Well, various countries, there's matchmaking, there's all sorts of other... Arranged marriages. Yes, there's well, all sorts of other ways. Well, <laughs> no. no, not necessarily. Hey, it might be a good idea because yeah. the parents might know better than the child who's great to go In out with. In some cultures, arranged marriages are still I'm out there. I'm all right. Let's for arranged marriages. Yeah, yeah. Arranged marriages right now. Children. <laughs> yeah, I can pick them a great partner. <laughs> well, well, do you want someone to ask out your boy? No. <laughs> no, I really don't. I no don't. way. But my son is so my son. shy. I, know some nice I, I mean, you I mentioned mind. girl, and he goes, I'm going to run to the woods. I'm going to live in the woods forever. I'm never, <laughs> ever going to get married. So I'm thinking, some sweet girl's going to be like, hi, oh, Gabe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's, it's a tough. I was raised uh, where you let the guy pursue you. Right. It's, it's, I guess that's old school. Uh, maybe, but I, I think it's okay in this day. In this day. In this day. Well, I don't think we really have a concrete answer for you out there. If you do, you should send us an email. Should a guy wait for the girl to ask? But in the meantime, if you could go back in time, all of us, what would you change? What would you relive? Would you want to go back? Would you never want to go back? I know what you would say, Kathy. You do. Yeah, you do. yeah. You're my sister. You're always the one that says, yeah. don't look back, look forward, right? right? I do. I, especially if bad stuff yeah. happens. So when you talk about reliving the past, if it's something bad, I'm done. I'm out. And I have a thing, and I know, I know you all know this, that my husband taught us, me, the two of us, we're like an airplane. And an airplane can only go up and forward. Wow, the only good. way an airplane goes backwards are the guys on the ground with the ropes pulling it backwards. Ah. So don't let people pull you back into mess. Ooh, go that's forward. Good. That's good. Well, I what do have you? a little regret. It's not a big thing, but it hurts my heart because I'm quick or sharp or sometimes cruel, believe it or not. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I don't care. You're tough. <laughs> If you're just tuning in, Roxanne's okay. an attorney. You know, we all go to the beach, we're having fun, all my brothers, all my family, and so on, and a beloved relative is uh, smoking a cigar. Not that I'm condoning smoking, uh -huh. but you know what, you don't, you don't have to, you could love people without worrying about that. Right. And I'm like, why do I always sit in back of you and my, the smoke is blowing? Why did I even say that? My husband's like, why are you, you saying? You said that to the relative. Yes, oh, why? Oh, so these little tiny, <laughs> that was rude. I know, that was rude. These little tiny cruel things right. 
that you try to control with, those are the things I regret. Telling my kids, a client you know, got me upset, mm -hmm. so no, I go yell at my kids instead of mm -hmm. you know, doing the right thing. So those little things I think about and all over, why, Roxanne? Mm -hmm. Hold the tongue, right. hold the tongue. I never got Would to go you? to prom. Oh. I'm so sad about yeah. that. You should have asked somebody. <laughs> yeah, you should have made the first oh, move. Seriously. Say no, I agree with you, Kathy. It's, I think even the painful parts of our lives, they're, they're there for a reason. Yes. And you don't know, you know, there's relationships I had that I'm kind of like, ah, I wish I didn't have it. But now I'm end I ended up with my guy, you know, and right. Right. what part of that might not that story be the same, so. Right. right. That's good. You know, late, you have something for well, me? on a lighter note, I was thinking if I could go back to the future, I'd probably take proactive back to the future back in. No. You're so beautiful. But speaking of beautiful, because you are beautiful, we have a guest that's going to be on with us, and it's all, he's so wonderful, Dr. Yes, Joss accents it's about health, yes. but do you know that there's children on playgrounds that are calling each other fat? Yes. Our producer told us of a story she knew where a little girl, elementary school, was just eating like one grape. Mm -hmm. do, you, do you think, what is going on? Yes. That has to come from the home. Mm -hmm. Calling each other fat mm -hmm. on the playground, girls. And I, I, where do they learn that? Yeah, I think also mm -hmm. this war on obesity mm -hmm. has somehow given people the privilege or the right to call other people names. Mm -hmm. They That's twisted right. it the wrong way. And uh, when my daughter came home last night from her church youth group, I said, what would you want me to say? Now, she was heavier when she was young, and it was my fault, not hers. Uh, and it's she not said, your Mom, fault. yeah, I indulged her. What, you she's gave her the donuts baby. every day? Oh, she's the baby, you know. You wanna... <laughs> but anyway, uh, I said, What would you want me to say? And she said, I want you to say how beautiful I was mm -hmm. and that everybody, people come in different sizes. I like that. And Aww. isn't that what Jesus says? You know, come to me, my yes. beloved. Right. And he gives us the care and, and the warmth of his love. And so I think they need to know there's a safe haven at home, first yes, of all. Right. And Absolutely. so that was, then she said yeah. something funny. She said, well, then I'd say, go back to your friend and tell her she's fugly, fat mm -hmm. and ugly. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say that fast. No, no we didn't no. mean that. We should, I, I wouldn't do that. <laughs> well, your daughter's in high school. Uh -huh. So what if Gloria came home and said to you, mm -hmm. someone told me I was fat? I'd say, give me her name and number right now. <laughs> I'm going to give her a call. Because you're beautiful and fearfully and wonderfully made, yes, but you know, right. really, as a as a mom, you know, especially at that stage in their teenage years, they already feel awkward. Yes. So any like if right. we if we say anything like that outfit doesn't look good, it's immediately taken as I'm fat or yes, I don't right. I'm not my I'm not okay careful. enough. So you have to be right. like really careful yeah. that you're not building into them your awkward and funky built. <laughs> And you know what? Yeah. It's, You're not just, beautiful. it's not just happening with teenagers. I have a nine-year-old and a six-year-old. Mm -hmm. And I have had my nine-year-old, who's a little gymnast, dancer, skinny little thing, that has said, mm -hmm. oh, I look fat in this, or I look oh, fat. Wow. And I, you know, when that happens, awesome. yeah. I grab that moment. I yes. look at her. You are beautiful. Right. You are a child of the king. Right. You are That's not good. what your clothes that you wear, right. or the makeup that you wear, right. or the Amen. hair. You are right. loved, and it has right. nothing to do right. with what you look right. like. Right. We do want our kids to be physically fit That's and true. to eat healthy. And so my last question for this segment mm -hmm. is about physical fitness, and it goes to a scripture, mm -hmm. which we always try to take things back right. to the Word of God. It is the blueprint for your life and mine, too. So the Bible tells us at 2 Corinthians, <laughs> Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. You were bought with a price, which means we got to take care of the temple. Mm -hmm. So should we see physical fitness as an option? No. A mandate from God? Maybe. For me, fun. Mm -hmm. What do you guys think? Girls think. I know what Flo would say, since Flo's not here. Yeah. I'm just speaking for everybody yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. I know what she'd say, too. Everything in moderation. Yes. Because yes. you can go either way with yes. that. You know, you can and go crazy. Yes. Like you balance. can go crazy with, you know, mm -hmm. working out too much. But I do think 
we need to work out a little yeah. more. Well, Paul, Paul says he yeah. uses physical exercise to buffet his physical body mm. so that he does not sin, that he takes everything under control. So I think there's a spiritual element there. Right. That you know we what's need funny to... about that? When you said that Paul said about don't buffet your body, there's a Joyce Meyer teaching where she says <laughs> that doesn't mean go to the buffet Yay. with <laughs> your body. Your body. No, right. Exercise right. your body right. as an Olympian. Paul as also a... said, you know, that bodily exercise, you know, profiteth a little. It's yes. not like the whole mm. entire pack. It does profit, but it's not everything. Some people focus all on the physical mm -hmm. and nothing on the spiritual That's and what's good. happening inside. That's good. I'd rather be big on the inside than so, true. So, so big and strong on the outside, you know? At, at, you know, New Year's when you're making your resolutions and, you know, that's the time of year when I'm like, okay, I'm gonna get serious about my eating and my health. And, and then I am convicted because it's like, how am I getting serious about my spiritual walk and my right. devotions? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Well, I th that's why it's so great the guest we're gonna have on yes. because we need to be spiritually fit, physically fit, and we need to put the right things in our bodies right. for great. sure. So we're gonna talk to Dr. Yes. Joss about that. And I'm hoping that you have something to say about this subject because the sisters are never at a loss for words. You could let us know at s2s at ctvn.org. But the most important thing we do here on Cornerstone Television is we pray for you. There's a number across the bottom of your screen, and it is 665-8, oh no, it's 888-665-4483. You would think I would know that number yeah, by now. Right. So we want you to call if you are in any need of any prayer. And Amy is a pastor, Roxanne is an attorney, my beautiful Corey is just a beautiful mom and woman of God. And we come to you with these cool answers of these cool questions. So does anybody else have any physical fitness story? Oh my gosh. Oh wow. I'm going to be asking the doctor. <laughs> okay, stay you are going to ask the doctor. Because I just to gained about right 20 there. pounds. <laughs> stay right there. We'll be back in just a minute with Dr. Josh. You are going to love him. Stay right there. Welcome back to Sister to Sister. I'm Kathy, and normally it's all girls up here with me today, but we are so excited to have Dr. Josh yeah. Axe with us today. Doctor, you, you wrote books. You have this amazing Exodus Health Center. It's one of the largest wellness clinics in the whole U.S. of A. Why are you doing all this? What's your passion with all this? Sure. Well, you know, a, a lot of my passion comes from uh, a health experience in my own family. And I think a lot of people, it's funny, when you start interviewing doctors or people in certain professions, a lot of times you find out it was a family experience growing up. But for mm -hmm. myself, uh, my family was always very active growing up. In fact, my mom was my gym teacher at a Christian oh, school. Oh, wow. My dad was a semi-pro water skier. So they were oh, always, cool. yeah, so they were always really active and fit as a family. <laughs> but at 40 years old, my mom was diagnosed with cancer. Which again was crazy because we thought she was so healthy right. and she went through the traditional medical system and, and had, a, had a mastectomy. She went through rounds and rounds and rounds of chemotherapy. And I was a child at the time, a junior high, just remembering my mom go through that and just saying to myself as her hair fall out and she got mm -hmm. so sick, you know, I never want to see anyone have to go through this That's again. Awesome. You know, and praise God, she was brought through that and diagnosed as oh. bring. <laughs> cancer free and healthy, but wow. going into the next thing, but really for the next 10 years after she went through chemotherapy, she was really sicker than ever. She spent half of her life in bed, no energy, no quality of life. And that went on for 10 years. And then at that point, I was actually working as a nutritionist in Florida. I was working and uh, working on my, um, my, my chiropractic degree. And she calls me and says, hey, I've got really bad news. I've been diagnosed with cancer again. And what do I do? And I flew home, we prayed together. <laughs> and really talked about it and she decided that she wanted to uh, start taking care of herself all naturally and try natural root first and so she started juicing vegetables every single day and doing wild berries and using essential oils and really just totally changed her diet and her health and what she was doing and her the oncologist actually was recommending something else to start but we decided that this is what the lord wanted us to do and uh, we went back four months after doing these natural treatment protocols and we got a call from him the next day and he just said, this is amazing, but the tumors have shrunk in half. Wow. Keep doing what you're doing. And 
Yeah, yeah and then we went back nine months later, and at that point it was complete remission. And today my mom is in the best shape of her life. In yeah. fact, she just turned. Oh, good. Yeah, good. she just turned good. 62 oh, years old. Like She's water skiing, and so. And her son was yeah. 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 And so awesome. and so for me that that was such a big thing yes. for me to see my mom healing natural. So really what I do now is teach people biblically based nutrition principles and biblically based medicine and how to heal naturally. And I'm so that's really way. where I'm, my I'm passion do comes from. He does. Well, helping Teacher. now, helping moms, and I'm one of them also. And as a result, you know, we gain weight as we grow older. Can you tell us why and how to handle that? Sure. Well, you know, there's no doubt that after you, once you hit 25 years old and older, that your metabolism tends to slow down oh, some. Yeah. Now, now here's the thing I do want to mention is I don't mention that that often because that turns into this big excuse. Oh, I'm older. I know. Oh, no matter what I do. In fact, I, I had a mentor who used to say, he said, people always try and say it's their... Um, their, uh, you know, their, their, it's a glandular problem, and he's like, it's not your thyroid, it's not your adrenals, it's your salivary glands. You know, you gotta <laughs> get those under control. Ooh, okay, but yeah, well. I think for most people, it really comes from um, just our society today. I mean, I think that's the issue is we're we're a society that's all about, hey, the quick fix. Mm -hmm. Hey, what can I get now to satisfy my immediate desires? Mm -hmm. And really changing our way of thinking to okay, this is a temple of God, I'm looking to fuel right. my body, not what's going to satisfy my taste buds now, oh. but what's going to transform my health and, and, and help me in the future. And so I really think that, you know, and this is something I'll share today, is really what are the foods that can really help transform your health. And I think we've also overcomplicated things. I think getting healthier is actually easier than most people think. And just to give you a quick example, too, and I think this will help. Should we write this down? Yeah, yeah take, get out your pen, yeah, take some notes. Tell you, because if you're an older woman and you want to know what to do, listen. Yes. <laughs> Go. But I can tell almost immediately how someone's going to do once, once they come into my clinic or once I'm doing a consultation because there's two ways of thinking about things when it comes to changing. One is, and I, I'd have patients come in who would be eating uh, certain grain products or things that they might even think are healthy. Are you talking carbs? Yeah, uh, I, I am, and I know yeah. most women are carbaholics. Yeah. Just to, yeah. but potato chips. But they would come in and say, <laughs> and they would be doing something for breakfast. Let's say orange juice, oatmeal, banana things. Something that would you would see, you would think, think would be healthy. Okay. But it's a lot of carbs. And I say, I want you to go from that and switch and start doing a berry smoothie, which that's not bad, right? A oh, strawberry smoothie for bad. breakfast, mm -hmm. some coconut milk, some berries. But I'd get one of two reactions. One would be. Oh, I can never do oatmeal again. This is the worst thing ever. Yeah. I can't believe And then I'd have another group that would say, yeah. the doctor here is telling me I can have a strawberry milkshake for breakfast. Yeah. This is amazing. Uh, and the people, when you start focusing on all the things you can't have, yeah. you will drive oh, yourself good. crazy. Right. You will fail versus right. thinking about, hey, I can have this for breakfast or right. this for lunch and dinner. Attitude. Right. And I found too, I used to do diet. Everybody's done a diet, right? Everyone here has done a diet. Yeah. I used to do diets of, maybe you've done this, it was like, plain oatmeal and egg whites for breakfast mm -hmm. and the chicken breast and broccoli for and lunch. Grapefruit every meal. Grapefruit every <laughs> meal. I like and I drove myself crazy and got to the point where food would it tasted like cardboard. I'm like yeah, this is yeah. and I started find I started getting creative in the kitchen and using seasonings and you know really incorporating just just eating real food. Just having that that perspective wow. and that totally changed it, it made it easy and i actually got in the best shape of my life just focusing on eating real food all right well i i'm gonna i have a friend that lost weight by do, going totally gluten-free another friend that talked about your mm. migraines will go away and i have to say i'm mm. a little bit of a, a skeptic of this whole gluten-free thing so what's your take on it well you know i used to teach a class called body by god and it was all about and we yeah, we, we, we we separated yeah. things into two categories food by man mm -hmm. and food by god and here's that. the issue with gluten today. When you read, when we read in the Bible, what sort of bread they were consuming? Well, first off, it was a sprouted grain bread that was a traditional type of wheat called einkorn wheat. And oh. so, and, and oftentimes it was done also through a fermentation process, like sourdough. So it was easy to digest, oh. natural grains, and then it was also done in moderation. Mm -hmm. I mean, bread wasn't consumed or these large amount of carbohydrates or gluten every meal. Today, we have not genetically modified, but we have hybridized our wheat products where it's actually yeah. different wow. than what you would know. find over in either. Italy today. And there's actually a very famous cool. book about this today called Wheat Belly. It says, lose the wheat, lose the weight. But it really is all about this form of gluten that yeah. has been crossbred and it's not the natural form of gluten that God originally created. Whenever we start moving away from what God designed,
Mm. That's really where these issues come in. And so again, a gluten-free diet, gl gluten is not the issue. Um, it's what man has done to gluten. Mm. So if you're doing a traditional mm. bread, like an Ezekiel bread or a, or a sourdough bread, right. in moderation. Right. Again, in yeah. moderation and small yeah. amounts, yeah. it's fine. Yeah. But I will say this, people can get to a point where sometimes I found with patients, they need to go grain or gluten-free for a period of time. Okay until they heal, and then down. they can add yep. it back in. Right. Okay. What do you think about vitamins and supplements? Should we be taking them? Where do we start? There are so many That's options and yeah. so many different resources telling us. What is your direction on that? You know, I would say this, about 80% of the supplements today are completely worthless. I would rather have... Oh, no. Now, now, oh, he, that's now, he, here's why I'm saying this. <laughs> I think everybody wants the pill approach, right? Yeah. I can take a pill, that's it's going to fix it, whether it's a synthetic medication or it's, oh. a, or it's a supplement. Right. But the reason I say this is it really goes back to it's, there's real foods and there's what I call, yeah. there's a Twinkie and there's a strawberry. And they may have the same amount of calories. We know you're doing better. Well, it's the same thing with supplements today. There are whole food-based supplements that are actually made of fruits and vegetables. Right. right. But there are right. synthetic supplements today that they actually make out of mineral salts and light rock. I'm not oh. taking that. But here's what I do want to know, I because I, I do want to write this down. <laughs> you have in your books, and, and you have written a couple of books, so we're going to get them. Sure. But there, you have a superfood list, and then you have things we should eliminate. So mm. if you could just tell Please us don't that. Do bagels. We are going to write bagels. Oh, bagels are bad. Okay, go. What do we have? So I would say that, and by the way, I, I had a, uh, a recent <laughs> segment I did on, on Dr. Oz, and I talked about the five metabolism death foods. You were on foods. Dr. Oz? I was. Oh, and, yes. and these were. Yay. So the, cool. these were some of the foods that, that you need to get out. One are hydrogenated oils. We know those are an issue. The other one would be excess sugar. And, and by the way, I'll give you a healthy replacement that tastes okay, all right? Okay. Um, along with that, I would say uh, the regular gluten, you know, and then get also- it out. Yeah, get it out. Oh boy. And then along, and, and then aside from that as well, a lot of, uh, basically a lot of the processed grain products. And then here's what you want to do. Tell me what we coconut going to oil, Switch over from hydrogenated oils to coconut oil and grass-fed mm -hmm. butter. But coconut oil is amazing fat-burning food. And you can use it on your food. face, too. You can use it yeah. for, for skin care. I do. Um, another <laughs> food you want to start what? adding in would be doing things like uh, seeds like chia and flax seeds. You can put those in a superfood smoothie chia for breakfast. Chia is a pet that grows no. green <laughs> stuff. Ch 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 chia. Uh, you are so walk. nutritionally ignorant, aren't we? As a sweetener, I still believe the best of the best sweetener out there today is raw local honey. Okay. And it's referenced in the Bible now again, as, as it says in the Proverbs, in moderation, you know, yes, use it sparingly, but local still, honey. raw local honey is the best sweetener you can be using out there today, without a doubt. And then switching over from the conventional meats, which are full of hormones and steroids, to organic wow. grass-fed meat. And I'll tell you, this stuff is easy access today. There are no excuses. Yes. Almost oh, every yeah. grocery store well, today almost, has access. Almost every almost. grocery store. But and if not, you can have it shipped from almost That's any true. website right to your <laughs> from home. From your website, that from would be a great Dr. idea. From We've got the supplements, the foods on there, we and the books. We do have the information for you to get more information from Dr. Josh Axe. I loved it. Yes. Thank you so much. Oh. And we Thanks love for having you me. being with us today because we're going to get you healthy inside okay. and out. See you again. We love to end sister to sister with a scripture. Today we're going to read from 2 Corinthians. Do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own sisters, but you have been bought with a price. You are so valuable to us and to God. I love that. Doctor, do you have a last word for us? I do. Actually, I, I love the book of Corinthians. In 1 Corinthians, it says, whether you eat, drink, or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. Amen. 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 Yeah. Yeah. And also on Sister to Sister, we always end with this. This is kind of our mantra, and it goes like this. As iron sharpens iron, so does the countenance of one sister or... Doctor, brother, <laughs> sharpen the other. He did sharpen us. He did sharpen yeah. us today. It was wonderful. We hope you enjoyed us. We're here every Wednesday. We are sister to sister.